pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. The warrants are, are going around. Um, so, but I'd ask you to give our first undivided attention to uh, a presentation that we'd like to do. Um, we'd like to recognize people when they have accomplished uh, a, a great feat here. And I think what uh, Jim has done is uh, quite an quite a accomplishment. And Mel's got a letter that I received, and I will have him read that, and I'll go up and start with the presentations of go ahead yeah uh, one thing uh, just to add you know obviously I promoted Jim Laro to take Carol O'Connor's position as a public work supervisor and uh, one of the reasons why there's a lot of reasons but one of the reasons was was what Jim was really planning uh, for that promotion all right and uh, and and one of the ways that he planned for that promotion was to get himself prepared. And uh, uh, one way to get prepared, fortunately, is the Vermont Local Roads Program. Uh, and I'm not sure, Jim, how long Local Roads has been going on, probably a couple decades. Uh, it's been about 23 years. Okay, so, and what uh, the Vermont Local Roads Program does is provide training opportunities for public works people, people who, who work on the highways, you know, from safety to whatever. And I knew Jim was going to a lot of classes, but uh, what I'm about to read to you, uh, I don't know when you started this, Jim, but it wasn't started last week. Uh, it was started a long time ago. So let me just read this, uh, read this letter. It's a letter dated June 23rd, 2011, to uh, Michael Danels, Mayor of Virgins. Dear Mayor Danels, and, and closed our certificates recognizing Jim Laro, Virgins Road Commissioner. We'll let that mistakes go, mistake go public works uh, supervisor. As both a level three and master Vermont Roads scholar, Jim exceeded the required number of training hours, 175. The training categories and the hours he attended follow technical, 61 hours, safety, 27 hours, equipment, 45 hours, environmental, 19 hours, and supervisory, 32 hours. The workshops have provided broad-based educational opportunities that are certain to make him a more valuable member of your team of professionals. The staff at Vermont Local Roads is pleased to offer workshops as one way to transfer technology in this ever-changing transportation environment. It would be a suitable gesture to present the certificates to Jim at an Alder Board meeting or another public forum. The Alder Board should also be congratulated for making it possible for him to attend the workshops. It's becoming increasingly important for everyone to take advantage of these training opportunities. It's been a pleasure to, know, to get to know Jim over the years, and we look forward to seeing him at future workshops as he continues his professional development. He is currently completing the Management Academy and has been a contributing and resourceful student. Master level is the highest level in the Rhodes Scholar Program. It is indeed a rare accomplishment. Jim is among a select few that have achieved this milestone. I'm certain you will find a suitable way to recognize him. Sincerely, Sally Colopy, Director of Vermont Local Roads. Jim, on behalf of the Vermont uh, road, uh, program, Local Road Program, I'd like to present you with these two certificates and our thanks to you for putting so much of a great effort into the program. Thank, Thank you very much. much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, and I just want to thank the city of Regens for supporting its employees to allowing them to take classes because some of them are during the day, and you pay for all of them. And I thank you for that. And I and also the employees that work for me, they're taking them classes also, and they're moving up through. And you're probably going to see a couple of them up here in the next three, four, five years with the same thing. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Jim. I have all the wrappings if you want to, so they won't get damaged. Thanks. If you want to hang around for a little bit. Yeah, I'll hang around for a little bit. The family's out of stake, so. <laughs> Appreciate you uh, coming tonight. 
Okay, what through. we're going to do is we're going to jump to nine. We're going to jump to new business, 9A, uh, Robert. St. Hilaire. St. Hilaire. Uh, we're going to take and talk about uh, his request for a vendor's license. I'd ask for a motion. Make said motion. I have a motion. Joe will second that. Now we'll open up for discussion. What's the city policy on vendors in that part? <clears throat> the, uh, you know, the, we, we should have brought that policy. Uh, it was actually rewritten just slightly uh, a year or so ago. Because uh, for years, the city green policy, with the exception of events like for Jen's Day, did not allow, uh, in essence, for-profit uh, businesses to be on the park. That was changed a, a year ago. I think David put forth uh, an amendment to that to, to allow, uh, with, with approval from the city council, a, uh, in essence, a private, privately held uh, vendor for-profit. For, uh, for So, Bobby, one of the things that uh, uh, the, the city council will be curious about is what type of machine that you do you have, how much room will you take, and where might you be located? John, can you? No problem. Do you have the picture? Yes. They all have a copy of it. It's yeah. right on the back of their application. Okay. Um, that's how big the machine is. Okay. Um, it, it is on meals. Okay. Um. Uh. No, I can. Is there anything else? This doesn't give a finishing time. I take it you wouldn't want to be sitting up there on Christmas Eve selling popcorn, although it probably would taste good Christmas Eve. Uh, <clears throat> what is the window of time that you're looking to, you know, month-wise? Month I'm not looking hours of the day. I'm looking, do you think you'll run it through into September? Um, weather permitting, um, this is my friend Charlotte. Uh, um, what is your question? He wants, he wants to know the time frame. Like, is it going to run into September? Or do you understand? <coughs> it's a trial frame. We're thinking um, a couple months, maybe eight to ten weeks. Right. And right. if it fares out well, maybe you, you'll come back and apply for another license for next year? Correct, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, just to support Bob because um, his other staff will be supporting him. Um, his machine is electric, and um, we were told there's a, a electrical outlet up there. We're not quite for sure. And will he be allowed to use the electricity, and will he have to pay um, extra money for the use of the electricity? Uh, that has come up before, yes. and uh, you know, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we don't we don't know really how much he's going to use it. You know, we can calculate to see whether or not, uh, you know, whether or not we're talking about ten dollars, twenty dollars, or seventy five dollars. You know, we'd ha we'd have to take a look at your machine and multiply it times the number of hours. Okay. You know, obviously, uh, you know, if it's you know, if it is something that clearly goes over your hundred dollars, we would we would need to charge for that. Uh, relic, uh, so, I mean, we do have vendors. You know that, uh, like, you know, when Mr. Ups is in the park, obviously they they connect. You know, it it is, you know, somewhat common for folks to be able to use the electricity. But obviously, uh, you know, we can't uh, we can't have that. Uh, be burdened by the taxpayers. So we right, have to right. run a calculation. Yes, okay. Um, now, could somebody go to his home to look at the machine, or is that something that we need to bring to the council, or? Uh, you, you won't need to bring it to the council. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, there should, there should be something, uh, you know, there should be a, a plaque on the machine that would tell what, they, what the amperage is. Okay. And how many watts the machine is? I mean, okay. that's, basically, that's that's what it, it comes down to. I can tell you, it's gonna 
a three from outfit so much on one ten. Yeah, yeah. We just need watts. We need the watts of uh, uh, that it that it takes, and then we can just we can convert that into kilowatts and calculate the value. Okay, we can get that to you. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> And relative to location, you should uh, write this phone number down. Okay. It's 877-3585. Uh, uh, it's the gentleman, and sec second gentleman to your left. Uh, he will he will point you in the right direction. Okay. All right. <laughs> Great. Maybe the only. No, this guy's in a little one in the room. Any other questions of either of these people? If not, I would. Well, just one quick question: If you sure. could provide a, a trash or something so people can throw their paper popcorn bags away, so they don't. Sure. Like that, an addition like that might be useful. Oh, okay. Yeah. That that would be fine. And the other thing, Mike, is, uh, and I don't know if that's on there, Joan, or not, but any time that there's a vendor's license issued for the park. That license is not valid on any uh, when there is any other events going on in the park, whether or not a city function or a non-city function. For instance, uh, when uh, on Monday nights when it's the city band, uh, that's controlled by the city band. The city band can allow you to be there, but this license doesn't allow you to be there. Uh, Strawberry Festival, the Family Day Evergreen, uh, Virgin's <laughs> Day, uh, Memorial Day, any time that there's an event on the park, this, this license doesn't apply. Okay. Do you understand that? No. Okay. Any other things? But, but he'll be able to contact whoever he has to. Absolutely. You can call me at City Hall. Call me. Anyone using the green has to schedule it with me so I will know if something's coming up. You are so, on my okay. number, correct? Yes, I do. Any other questions? If not, I'll move to the motion. I make the motion. Oh, we already have a motion. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. We'll be up to test out that popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before we do anything, we have to let let you know about the ants and the kilowatts. Yes. And where you're going to be set up, so I'll know which box to unlock so you can use it. Okay. And you're going to be yeah. Jim. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Okay. You're all set. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> I think we can go. I don't think we need to hang out here, do you? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. As long as the uh, individuals are here from the Virgin's Laundry, let's uh, uh, go right to 9B. got your uh, diagram that's been provided uh, we've got a request for some changing in the outside seating for the Virgin's laundry at 247 Main Street um, so I'd ask for a motion make said motion second Randy made the motion mm -hmm. Lowell seconded it I will open it up for discussion just a, a matter of disclosure um, the other day when I went in to get a loaf of bread which was delicious by the way. <laughs> Um, I stopped and chatted with both of them about exactly where it was about, just asking what it was that was happening. Was the, hmm? Just good, a conversation. Good clarification. <clears throat> Any other questions, comments? Andy? Who owns the gardens? Is it the city? It's on city property. <clears throat> the, um, if my memory serves me correctly, the ownership of the gardens themselves um, falls to the individual, the, the, 
the ownership of the plants and the gardens and the, and, and the responsibility relative to maintenance rests with each individual property. With the exception of the basin block, which we agreed to maintain the bulb out. Okay. Thank you for that clarification, David. Uh, comments? Are there any usable plants left that uh, could be uh, moved into some of our other city gardens if they were to go away? I mean, I hate to see something destroyed. The plan is for them to go to Peter's Wood. Oh. That's not a problem. No, no, as long as they have a home. Yeah. A good home. Okay. Um, yeah, Mike, one, one thing I, uh, you know, if, if, if you all went down and took a look at it, uh, this property, you know, Virginia's Laundry is part of a property owned by, by Peter Morris and Penny, and Penny Morris. And, you know, David is a tenant on the, on the left-hand side. And if you, if you look where in the middle of the flat area where it says existing, uh, if you were to draw a line extending both ends of that E, that basically is nearly the dividing line between the two properties. And uh, the area, you know, at about 430, it, there's a little square area there, which is clearly in front of the Virgin's Laundry. This garden actually extends, uh, I don't want to say totally in front of uh, Main, uh, uh, Main Street Footworks, but nearly all of that. And if I wanted to just clarify the request and whether or not, uh, you know, obviously to the right, the dark shaded area, that's what your permitted outside seating area is currently. And what you're proposing <laughs> is that the entire, I just want to understand what, what the proposal is, is that the end, because the flower garden is at, a, at a, is at a separate, at a different level than the upper, all right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so and, and the upper and the lower is divided by a railing. So I just want a clarification as to what you're requesting, both upper and lower. What, what's There's being requested? The upper. No, no seating, seating on the upper. No seating on the upper. That would still be for walking. And then below, just remove the lilies, put in bricks that would flow with the other existing area, make it all one, and that, would, that entire lower area next to the sidewalk. And that, that would be kind of a mixed use, you know, have a small table, people could park their bikes and then have a couple of large home planters or, you know, planters on top of the bricks that we can then maintain, uh, maintain and manage. Randy, did you have a question? No. Any <coughs> other questions, comments? I, I take it they would not be there in colder weather, so that Jim has to replace them every year after they get plowed under. Um, no other discussion? I will move to the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Congratulations. <laughs> Have a good evening. Okay. Um, we'll go back to uh, visitors. None? Just Andy. And Jim. And Jim. <coughs> All right. Uh, warrants have gone around. I take it everyone has signed them. You have them back? There actually is two separate sets of warrants. The uh, I'm colorblind, so I, it looks maroon to me. Uh, but the maroon folder represents bills that we had to pay uh, on or before June 30th. And then the larger stack are bills uh, that have come in since June 30th. Uh, so there really is two. If you, um, um, what you need to do is sign both of those warrants they if did. you didn't. You didn't. They okay. did. Good. Good. Thank you. We're well trained. <laughs> We we're, gave the instructions. We're, we're, <laughs> we're trainable. Okay. Um, I'd ask for a motion on the minutes, and I'm trying to find them, uh, for the Virginia City Council meeting June 21st. Make um, second. Second. Lowell gets the first, and Randy gets the second. Um, 
Any omissions, corrections, or errors? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Budget. I don't think we printed one, uh, nor two. Uh, one of the things is, is obviously we closed the fiscal year on June 30th. Uh, we could we could print your budget report. The problem is, is that the budget report's gonna be wrong. And the reason why it's gonna be wrong is many of the bills that are in here uh, being paid in July represent either purchases that occurred in June or services, uh, or service period prior to June 1, and so those bills need to be using a journal entry feature need to be charged back to the previous year I think I mentioned at the last meeting that it wouldn't be surprising that we would have about twenty thousand dollars worth of bills uh, paid in July that would be charged back to the previous year uh, I will tell you that uh, I uh, trying to remember if I did uh, did my little butterfly sheet but at the last meeting I think I prepared something that did a little bit of a forecasting uh, whereby uh, prior to any any bills being paid in July that are June, the number the last number that I came up with was was around one hundred ninety thousand dollar fund balance, and that number is only going to go down. Uh, that's going to go down because of bills being approved uh, paid in July for June service, which could be about twenty thousand uh, dollars. Also, we ended the year with sixty three or sixty four thousand dollars worth of delinquents. Uh, Last uh, August 30th, uh, we got that balance down to 16. If, as an example, that 16 grows to uh, 36, then obviously the deferred revenue increases by $20,000. So that 190, because of bills, could go to 170, and then because of taxes, could go to uh, could go to 150. Uh, the budget that was adopted used, I think, around $125,000. So I, I still feel that that's uh, safe. One of the things that Jim uh, assured me uh, was Jim has been meeting routinely with the FEMA folks relative to the major storm that we had in, in uh, April causing all of the damage on Green Street. And we have around you know twelve or so thousand dollars worth of damage that was eligible under FEMA. And I think Jimmy told me that 75% comes from the feds and potentially an additional 15%. So right near now that $12,000 was charged to the budget. And uh, I'm not ready to uh, explain this to Randy. You know, uh, I trust the government, but uh, you know, I, I, I like seeing real money uh, in the form of a check uh, before I start making a journal entry. So we should see upwards to $10,000, which obviously would, would make that original 190 grow to 200. So, uh, uh, but again, you know, the auditors were here on uh, the, the 21st, spent one day. They always come and do a preliminary work at City Hall to you know, yeah. get, ready, get ready for the real two or three days that they spend uh, that we have scheduled in the first part of September. So uh, we would hope that we would be able to get you, you know, in essence, a final mm -hmm. budget report or a more final budget report. Um, uh, you know, I would hope that we're, Joe and I are actually working on a lot of the journal entries ourselves as opposed to waiting for the auditors. So we, we might be able to get you something more definitive uh, by the end of by the end of August. Uh, relative to the current budget, I uh, you know the only bills that would affect the budget are what you see in this packet. So it's not like we're we're deep into the budget. You can do any any uh, analysis, but we'll uh, we'll go back to the routine next you know next month of having a budget report at every meeting. Excellent. <clears throat> any questions of Mel? As far as budget related. If not, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Anybody have anything to report as far as committee goes? We've, we've uh, been in contact with the uh, swim team about replacing the uh, starting blocks for the pool. There's been some emails go that have gone back and forth regarding that, but there hasn't been any action on that. But I was curious, Mel, about the status of the tennis courts. I noticed that. Yeah, tennis courts, <laughs> actually, I pulled out that. Uh, that uh, that agreement today and it's actually on my desk whether or not I can sign it and I know that the committee went with option two so we certainly want to do that I will tell you Joe I, I actually I did I pulled the trigger on those starting blocks oh, okay. to be honest with you Kim and I met uh, subsequent to a lot of the emails uh, and we wanted to uh, to go ahead and get those ordered and so I did place an order for those the, the starting blocks that were down there at the pool were, were something that was built by um, 
Bob uh, in 19 something or rather. Yeah. Uh, somebody somebody joked the other day there was a picture of of their daughter uh, going off the blocks and and I think the the mom or the grandma said, Jesus, I think those are the same blocks that I dove off back in 1971. So anyway, we have ordered, you know, absolutely professional stainless steel uh, uh, starting blocks. They're a single bolt. Like right now, there's these four bolts that have to go into the concrete and sometimes the thread strip or whatever. So this is, this is very, very high quality. Um, uh, equipment and so I ordered they're on the way Joe so I'm sorry I, I didn't uh, oh, that's right Kim you know, did a lot of work researching and found a you know um, really professional and well-built ones for a pretty good price yeah so. yeah so uh, they're, they're just a single they're just a single bolt attachment so there will be a, uh, you know some type of I would call it a lead seal but there'll be a, a single bolt in the in the uh, right in the center of it so instead of having four bolts and all this type of thing, it'll be a little simpler to, uh, to install. The other thing is, uh, I'm not sure who's going to do it, but we will get somebody to do it if need be. You know, the concrete is in good shape, but obviously it's not absolutely the same everywhere along the width of that pool. And so once they come here, there may have to be a little bit of tweaking to make sure that they sit solid, either a little bit of space or underneath the bolt or something on the back side that, so that when they sit, they sit absolutely flush and there isn't any rocking. They, they all will be numbered. So in essence, lanes one through six will be in essence custom <laughs> modified uh, you know, to the surface so that you know, when they're put out uh, for any swim meet, you know, like I say, they'll be absolutely rock solid the apparently what was there a little rickety and you know really can be a little bit dangerous uh, uh, in part they really they do need to be done but also the, the league meets rotate uh, around the state and next year uh, the league meet is held in Virgins and just felt that you know really this was the time to invest the money and you know uh, the, the, it is covered with some like all-weather carpeting you know probably about a 10-year life the stainless steel uh, blocks itself, uh, I, I don't want to say they'll last forever, but none of us will have to worry about them. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be just fine. So, And Thank what you. we've done, Joe, with, um, uh, you know, we're going to have the, the, as recommended by the committee, have the Recreation Reserve Fund pay that bill uh, and, and then work out arrangement, you know, for some cost sharing with the swim team over time. Uh, and Kim was absolutely fine with that, and uh, so we just, like I say, I just proceeded to pull a trigger on them and get them here. All right, thanks, uh, Mel. So. Okay. Anything else, uh, Joe? No, nope, that's it there. for me. Randy, Anthony. Well, there is a letter in here that uh, uh, was sent out from Rhonda, uh, thanking us for the money that we gave for the ads. Yeah. Just want to point that out. Unfortunately, I was by there the other night on Thursday night, and there was only a couple of vendors out there. I'm hoping it picks up more with this advertisement. There'll be more people available to either show and my. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else so on the other side of the table as far as committees? Nothing? Okay. We'll move to public comment. And I take it there isn't any. Uh, old business, uh, request to reduce out-of-town sewer rates. No. Yeah, I, I just, uh, at the last meeting, you know, obviously the letter was read by Mrs. Menard, and I took it, off, <laughs> took it upon myself to uh, respond to her, to let her know that, uh, to acknowledge the receipt of that letter and let her, and let her know that the, the city council will be, will be working on that. And... Uh, I actually, just so that you know, I, I did send an email to the League of Cities and Towns, of which they in turn sent an email out to uh, either all of their membership or, or the managers relative to out-of-district rates. Uh, Karen Horn did respond with that with, with some information. I don't have a lot, of, uh, a lot of information about how other towns are uh, handling it, and I, I do need to have a conversation with the village manager in Swanton. Uh, uh, it there they are kind of all over the map, uh, but I'll print that for you. And uh, I think the way that this was left is if there was going to be uh, a change, 
then obviously that Joan would need to need would need to know that change before she does the next quarterly billing, which would be on October fifteenth. So, uh, you know, I'm uh, planning on you know completing my uh, uh, research and getting that back to you uh, at either meeting in in August. You know, I'm I'm really done, but I, I just need to you know, put that together for you. Any questions, Mel? No, but I wanted Jim to stay because I had to bring something up and he just left. Right? Uh, the old you, you can bring it up at another point. If, well, um, he's gone. <laughs> but we can get that information to him. All right. So. Um, is it something that Mel, because Mel? No, it has to do with something else that I was going to say next when he was finished. So let's, let's okay. Kind of <clears throat> That's all that. I have on that topic. Yeah. Okay. If it's something, that, uh, I hate, we're not trying to circumvent Mel, but as of probably noon tomorrow, he's going to be flopping right. some wings headed south to another state. Begins with V, but it's not yeah. Vermont. Right. So. <clears throat> okay. Um, Mel, then we'll go right to the city manager's report. Uh, well, I, I will say that if you. Uh, I'm sure everybody has seen the streetscape project. Uh, the only thing that's left to be done uh, there are some plantings uh, and some final uh, paving and some line uh, striping. And I can tell you, I, uh, I haven't got the final bill on the project, but I can tell you the product, I am extremely pleased with, with what we ended up with. And uh, well, we received a lot of compliments as to what this thing look like, looks like now. Uh, you know, the, uh, the pant and stone facing that uh, it goes in front of uh, Hollyhocks has really spruced that up. Uh, they have plans to replace their, uh, replace their entrance door. So, I mean, it really, it really looks like the print. Uh, uh, it's a, it, obviously, it was the biggest uh, project, streetscape project, that I think we've ever done from a lineal footage and the number of ramps and basements. You know, it was really a big, a big project and uh, uh, I'm glad we we've got that one uh, behind us uh, the uh, I do uh, I still want to do something in front of uh, the Beth the Methodist Church to try to at least complete that block and be done with it uh, I think there is another uh, round of funding very limited funding the downtown program uh, I think when we applied the last time there was probably a couple hundred thousand dollars available and I think that program is down to a hundred thousand so uh, there's not a lot of money and probably will be uh, quite uh, competitive. Uh, so that's that project there. Uh, John Graham Shelter, you're seeing a lot of activity there. Uh, you know, Joan and I work together with Meg Pond. I don't know that you guys have ever met Meg Pond, but, you know, Meg was, we have a, con the city has a contract with Meg to provide administrative services to keep compliant with all the federal regulations. And so uh, uh, we work closely with her. Uh, relative to uh, the online uh, grants administration, uh, getting uh, reimbursements, and it's something that gets added to Jones Jones plate. You know, there's every month there's uh, one or two bills that uh, that come in that we file the reimbursement. The money gets wired into Jones' account, and then Joan has 10 days to get rid of it. It's her uh, uh, isn't held on. She didn't hold held on to it uh, for very long. Uh, the swimming pool uh, is is obviously running great. I, ha I hate to see this rain. We we collected a dollar the other day. It, it was a little, a little strange, uh, but anyway, you're going to have those days. But the pool the pool is fine. You know, we uh, we had the last the first uh, full month of electric usage with our new pump, and uh, the electric uh, usage the the daily average. A year ago, it was 257 kilowatts, and the average daily usage, uh, given the new pump, was 199. So we ended up with about a you know 15 to 20 percent increase. Uh, put forth a, a rebate claim to Efficiency Vermont. They're going to send us a check for 100 bucks. You know that's that's nice. So uh, we think that that pump, uh, from an just from an efficiency standpoint, will save us. Uh, at least $750 a year. All right. So we spent $6,500 on the pump. And in nine years, we'll get our, we'll in essence get our money back uh, on uh, on lowered uh, electric uh, bills. You know, obviously, uh, if you haven't heard, you'll you'll hear it now about the vandalism that occurred at the pool. Uh, we had a late night break into the pool, uh, and uh, whereby they uh, uh, 
there was a there's a corrugated door, corrugated overhead door that encloses the uh, the small room where the vending machines are. They t totally destroyed that room. It, I'm not sure if they destroyed the the uh, the snack machine. Never really got to the soda machine. Never got to the money. Uh, and then used a pry bar to the, the, the counter window and uh, couldn't get in there and then kicked in the, uh, there's like a split door into the office, uh, kicked, the, uh, kicked that door in uh, and uh, was able to uh, get off with about $2.35 worth of bottles. Uh, so uh, ended up with, you know, somewhere in the vicinity of $1,500 worth of damage over $2.50 worth of bottles. You know, obviously our insurance will pay for everything but the the five hundred dollar deductible but pretty uh pretty crazy you know really uh to uh, uh to think that happened you know obviously the police are, are working on that investigation in hopes we can find that and uh, uh recapture those uh, costs we had to cancel cancel swim team cancel lessons uh for that morning i mean we had glass glass all over the place so that was a little unfortunate never had never occurred in the past according to roland had we ever had any vandalism like that uh, to the facility so that wasn't uh, that wasn't my best monday uh, so anyway let's uh, hope that we can uh, we can find them senior housing project you see that uh, i'm sorry randy yeah yeah so um uh, well, I uh, I certainly have had a number of discussions with George about it. I uh, you know I I do know something about the charge, but that's obviously a different type of a charge than than the uh, unlawful entry versus destruction to public property. Those are two different citations. So it's it's good to hear that part of it. Uh, so anyway, I don't know what they further what they can prove further. Right, right. Well, it's it's a as they say an ongoing investigation. Um, may not, the story may not be over, but right, you, exactly. you guys should know there, there have been some charges right. filed in the case. Yeah. Um, senior housing project, you see a lot of activity there. For some reason, Joan, the, uh, there, there has not been any reimbursement request coming through our office relative to that project. Now, keep in mind, it's a $6.4 million project. The city has a you know, 660000 or $670,000 piece, so maybe we're, we, we may be the last dollar out, and maybe we... Uh, we won't uh, be involved with it until until uh, until later on. The uh, the Riverwalk project is uh, in process, uh, which is the the new stairway and viewing platform uh, starting to take uh, starting to take shape down there. Uh, you know that's a you know November uh, uh, November finish. Uh, so anyway, those are just some of the projects that we're, that we're you know that we're working on. You know, a lot of a lot of grant grant activity. Uh, I didn't realize that we had that many going on at the same time. To be honest with you, but anyway, we we uh, we do. So we hope uh, to have some sort of a ribbon cutting ceremony. Yeah, we may I have think, to do it with our winter coats on, but yeah, you know, it's, or our deer you know, rifles. Who knows? it's a little strange. I was talking to somebody the other day. I I I don't remember a time. You know, and, and and it's not like the city's doing the senior housing project, but it's a it's a it is a government project that we're involved with. But if you think about the list of projects that are going on right now in, in the city between the streetscape, the train station, which you know I got an email the other day, we think it's still going to move. Andy, don't laugh. Uh, you know the Riverwalk project, the John Graham Shelter project. I mean, I mean, really, there's a lot of projects going on. You know, millions of dollars worth of projects that are going on this season. You know. It's just it's a, it is a little little weird and when you come into my office you know there's about six thick stacks of uh, of grant projects that we have that we have to adhere to you know all of the procurement guidelines so it's a little it's a little crazy so uh, but anyway good, good they'll, crazy they'll get, yeah good crazy exactly so that's all I got. Uh, my oh, let me just tell you, I did put up four houses for delinquent for tax sale for delinquent sewers, and I've collected three out of the four in full. Right, Joan? Uh, and one of them, yeah, you, no, the check is coming. You you've got two. You've got three. You've got three, and I talked to the bank on the fourth one. So we had we really we used to, delinqu we're not out of the woods on delinquent sewer, but I had four accounts that all owed. 
uh, uh, $2,000 or more, you know, going back to 2006. And so what I did was I attacked, if you will, those, those four. And like I say, I spoke to the bank about the fourth one to get those. So there's around $8,000 that'll come out for delinquent, uh, uh, delinquent sewers. I did put one home up for tax sale, remembering that we're, we got down to three uh, properties uh, that still owed for 2008, 2009. And uh, one of them uh, was up for tax sale, and we've collected all of the 2008. So we have no tax, no delinquent taxes prior to 2009, and the balance of the 2009 is like three thousand twenty-two dollars and twenty-three cents, or something like that. Which obviously is the good news. The problem is, is there's sixty-six thousand dollars right behind it that we uh, that we have to collect. So we'll uh, we'll uh, work on that uh, diligently here in uh, in August. So. That's all I have, Mike. Okay. Any questions of Mel? Hearing none, uh, we'll go to 9C, Fire Protection Agreement. Dr. Mel? Yeah, I've got, I've got the originals here. And uh, uh, you, you're, I did include the, uh, the contract calculation sheet, which is, which is the same sheet that you've been seeing before. So I have two... Uh, Make sure I've got them here. I have two originals for Ferrisburg, two originals for uh, for Waltham, and two originals for Panton. Is what I'm. And you need signatures. So I need I need signatures on all of mine. I get the feeling that Ferrisburg two, three. Okay, yeah, I don't have the top. I, I think some of you may have got my pen, but anyway, there should be six places for you to sign. You want Start to this way. Okay. Okay. We don't require a motion on any of that, just a standard signature in there. Right. Okay. All right. Um, go to. Oh, uh, there's the pen. That's That page goes in there somewhere. We'll go to item number D, reappointment of planning commission. Let me get my. <clears throat> got that right there, Mike. If you want. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Planning, planning commission. Here. All right. The person, the people that are up are Morgan Kittredge, who has uh, agreed to get reappointed. Uh, Jason Farrell. I still haven't been able to catch up with him. I've called him a couple times. Yeah, he's back. He's, he's back to work. Came back to work yesterday. Should we just punish him and uh, sure, absolutely. reappoint him? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, we have vacant. a vacancy that yeah. we're not going to fill at this point. Uh, Michael Winslow agreed that he'd be willing to serve another hook, another hitch. So I would ask for a motion to reappoint Morgan, Jason, and Michael. Second. Motion made by Lowell, seconded by Ziggy. Uh, open for discussion if there need be. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. And what's the term? And the term is going to be 2013. 2013. August 1, 2013. No. Yeah, great. And this next, the okay. development oh, review oh, wait, board. Wait, wait, one. The okay. development review board. <coughs> following individuals uh, are Brett. Rakowski. Rakowski. He has agreed. Jason Farrell, which we're, we're going to have him agree. Uh, Stephen Rappaport, who has agreed. Uh, Don Peabody, who has agreed. Uh, Lowell Burchan would be the alternate. I didn't ask him. I noticed. <laughs> sure. I, I, oh, by the way, Joan, so you got my message about the numbers being transposed? I did. Or somebody did? I took care of it. Oh, it's all taken care of? Yeah. Okay. Because Lowell's, Lowell's number was on Don's phone number, and Don's was on Lowell's. So right. 6960 is you, right? Oh, yeah, that is correct. Okay, yeah, so I got it in the right spot now. So, and that's it. So, um, Lowell, will you do us the honor? So that takes me off, right? No, no, you're you're yeah, on until yeah, 2000 August 1, 2012. But it actually is Lowell's turn, okay. okay? So the next time that we need... Uh, someone there that either due to lack of attendance or has a conflict, it's Lowell, it's Lowell's turn next. Okay. I ask for a motion. I will make the motion to 
appoint those for another term. The 2013 term. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Peter seconded. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Oh. They, they are doing a great job, too. I was going to, so Peter is still on it. Peter is on till 2012. Okay. Yep, his term ends 2012, so he'll be getting a call next July. Mike? This might be a good time to ask. I've had a question from a citizen about the website and wondered if we might be, who, who is responsible, if we could please keep development board uh, and city council minutes current, because they always check the minutes. We are attempting to do that. Okay. It's, uh, um, we fell behind a little bit, and uh, I think everything is caught up now. Uh, I, I know that I, I sent agenda to Judy. I don't know if Joan sent minutes to Judy, and I, but I, but I do think that planning, planning, and and zoning, I think, are behind. Okay. And, and that's that's in my court. I, I too got an email and uh, have talked to Joan Mill, and they're trying to. Keep that up, and if they're unable to, they just got to take and Set slide, to slide the do document to Judy, and okay. Judy will do it. It's easier if it's one of those things if you don't use it a lot, it's, you, it, forget. You, you forget. Yeah, yeah. So, and she was through the whole testing stage, so she knows how to work in a system a little bit. Matter of fact, she even got into <coughs> programming that she had never done before, so that's that's helped her grow. Uh, so she'll she'll help. It'll cost me money, but she will help. So. Okay. Um, Mike, one thing I forgot to uh, mention: uh, another thing that was included in your packet was a memo that came down from the tax department relative to uh, uh, late filing penalties. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, this is actually some new legislation. And Joan and I have been talking about talking about this, and we will come back to you. With uh, with a recommendation, uh, sometime before she ends up having to do revised build. I mean, that's what it comes down to, Joan. Is is when somebody has who has uh, obviously this is a new, a different year this year. Remember, in previous years, you had to file your homestead declaration every year, all right? And that there that was problematic to some degree. People would would neglect to file. Uh, they would it's neglect a plot file for their property tax, and so those people were forever being chased. And so uh, eventually the tax department would communicate with them, and then once the download came down to Joan, Joan would have to do revised billing, and there was some small penalties there, all right? So during the last legislative session, there was the idea that people would not have to file every year. They could file once. And that declaration flag, if you will, is what they is what they call it on our on our computers, uh, would stay there until the flag is removed. All right. Until they were removed. thinking that would be that would be less cumbersome on people. Well, uh, there's there are some problems in that regard, and that is, for instance, when somebody sells their property to somebody, regardless of whether or not whether or not they sold it to somebody who's going to live there or not live there when you sell your property you need to notify the tax department so that the declaration gets removed and the new owner is required to file so basically what the change in law does is, is, it, is it took this set of problems and got rid of those and created this set of problems over here all right and so what's happening is a number of people in Virgins who bought a piece of property that was previously a homestead property and the prop the, the new owners don't live there they rent it their bill is wrong the we know right. that it's wrong and the bill is going to be changed uh and in some instances you know joan and i feel that you know people should not be penalized because the person that they bought from failed to do something all right? right we don't think that they should be penalized but on the other hand if somebody buys a piece of property uh, that was not a homestead and they fail to file their declaration and therefore they've got a wrong bill and they're going to end up with a revi have to do a revised bill you know we think in those instances they should be penalized so there's really about four different scenarios you know that can happen 
Should have had one, didn't get one, got one, shouldn't have had one. Claimed uh, one, wasn't you know, eligible yep, for one. Right. <laughs> it you know, it's like, previous oh, seller's boy. responsibility. So we just need to, what we want to do is come up with, in essence, a schedule of, you know, if this, then this, if this, then this. And some would be, if this, then this, no penalty, no penalty applies, so that Joan can prepare the bill. And, and I, I, I'm not sure how soon the new revisions are going to come in oh they could come any every monday i've gone i haven't gotten any okay. yet but any time so we need to get we need to get that to you because the point is is that she, she likes to get these thing, things off her plate so uh you know if, if we had the luxury of time we would have given you a recommendation tonight but what's going to end up needing to happen joan is before the city council makes any decision here you're going to need to hold on those revised bills if they're going to be subject to a to a waiver, okay. Mm -hmm. See, I I tend to. I mean, I, we've read through this thing, and see, I tend to feel that that Joan and I should not be waiving penalties. That's not what we do. All right, you folks set the penalties. The we policy, collect the penalties. We'll right? <laughs> yeah, and relative to waivers, you know, we think that the city council should have a policy. Whereby, whereby a penalty could get waived, and we would follow that, and, th and that would only be be the exception. But we'll come back with a with a memo to you. Uh, so uh, I know I know that property taxes aren't easy in Vermont, and this is one one example of what we're talking about. You know, with two different rates, two different types of ownership. You know, ho you know, homestead flags, property tax adjustments. You know, and there's probably billing used to be easy. You know, you had a grand people. list, you had a tax rate, you sent the bill out, collected the money. Right? It was simple. Right now, that's all kinds of moving and parts that we have to. People with TurboTax didn't show. Yeah. They have a, a screw up in that, and so now the state's working with Turbo <clears throat> to fix all those. Right. All like, of the oh people that God. thought that they filed for their property tax uh, adjustment uh -oh. didn't. All right. Well, so then they got a letter. <laughs> and of course, we send them a bill. All right. I mean, I can tell you that we have horror stories out yeah. there, and we. I mean, it's, we. You know, we're small enough so we can keep track of everybody, yeah. but I can tell you that, I, I, won't, I won't give you the person's too. name, but we had an individual in town who's probably 80 years old, all right? Sizable tax bill, fixed income, would typically get a, a state payment adjustment of 2000 or $3,000, all right? And because of turbo or scanning errors or one box didn't get filled out, all right? Uh, some letter came down for the tax department requesting some information, all right? And the individual followed what the letter said. And because he followed what the letter said, he ended up with an $89 penalty on his bill. He and he didn't get the $2,000 adjustment, all right? Now, in Virgins, you know, when he, Randy, you were there that day, okay? You were hot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, in Virgins, you know, we know our people. You know, we know, we know who's on fixed income, how old they are, and whatever. And fortunately, I have a contact person in the tax department that I can go to and flush these things out. And unfortunately, this taxpayer is going to have to pay. I know he's going to end up paying it because that's the kind of guy he is. He's going to pay his first quarterly installment, which is five hundred dollars more than it ever was. But he's going to pay it and so get his credit on, get his credit on the other uh, on the other bills. But that's the kind of problems with this system, you know. And I, I forwarded some of the emails to Steve Jeffrey, and Steve Jeffrey forwarded them on to the tax uh, commissioner. And that's how we learned about the turbo tax problem. <laughs> it, it really is, you know, it's a problem. Uh, you know, that, you know, the testing isn't, you know, isn't done. And I don't know how the heck you do it in South Burlington or Burlington. It's like I say, we know everybody here. We send out 931 bills. You know, we, we can look at a bill and you instantly say, know right. that's a problem, okay? <laughs> South Burlington, you can't do that. You know, so it's, it's, it's a... So statewide, it's a big mess. Yeah, they got a mess on their hands. So and so that's the other thing relative to waiving penalty. You know, we would have a hard time penalizing somebody because they filed TurboTax and there was a computer glitch. You know, in the tax department. I mean, that's not that's, I mean, not, that's right. not fair. You know, so this is going to be kind of a weird. Uh, a, a, a different set of problems this year. And they're year talking about have. turning it back to where everyone have to file again. Right. It's like, oh my God, these people are going to be so confused on what they need they're to already do. confused. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, yeah. and unfortunately, it, you know, you know, we're, we're busy. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, it's things like this that just, you know, it, it grabs a half hour of your time, you know, and, and 
you know, it isn't something you plan on that day and pops up and that's what we that's what we gotta do. We gotta take care of our people, you know. You sure it's just a half an hour, Mel? I don't know. I'll say I'd like to get through it in a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, sorry and, my and not, not a problem. And I just can't wait to see how they're gonna pay for health care. <laughs> that's a, another issue by itself. Um, for those that would like to attend, they're having a French French Heritage Day follow-up meeting this Thursday, 5.30, at the bandstand. So, um, just a little bit of information uh, for those that weren't able to make it. Um, so many events were going on in other parts of the state. <coughs> uh, the tractor pulled out in Moncton Ridge, uh, Brandon having their 250th, New Haven having their 250th. A lot of vendors that normally came here split off into other areas and it was just and and such a gorgeous day um, attendance was down uh, but there was a different crowd there this year from what I can remember last year I, I was it was some more of the deep blooded French uh, heritage people that were there um, and they they really uh, spoke well of, of the day very, very good. So, good thing. Um, we're having an issue um, with funding. Uh, grants weren't available. We're hoping next year something will change there. Uh, if not, uh, uh, the city may be asked to uh, open its pocketbook a little bit to help subsidize that. So, that's just a heads up. Okay. Um, I looked at my we have two meetings in in um, August. Yeah. Turn the wrong just key. One. In August, just one. Just one. August. Oh, so huh? it's just one. one in August. Okay. Huh? One. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's on our schedule. I don't August twenty third, I think, was the date. Uh, whoops! I gotta get to August, huh? Twenty third okay. is a Tuesday. Yep. Yeah. That's it. It's the Thursday. It's the Tuesday before our thirtieth anniversary of Virgin's Day. Hmm. This year we'll be celebrating the 30th anniversary. Hopefully they'll have some cake. <laughs> so I won't be at that meeting. Just heads you, up to both of you, so I don't have to call you. Later. Sure. Okay. I'll be out of town. Great. If there's anybody else that won't be present, please try to let us know so that we can at least uh, make sure we have a quorum. Have a quorum. Tuesday. August 23rd. Oh, okay. Tuesday. So. Um, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Wait, wait, I got oops, something. Oops, I'm sorry. Yep, yep, <laughs> you do. This has to do with the boat, midnight, is it midnight lady? We call Moonlight, Moonlight lady. Moonlight lady. Yep. All right. Apparently, the crew or Jim's people, they go out when it's coming up, and they put these signs out, reserved, and it's big letters. But then when they put the date for it to come in, it's in a little smaller. So when people come in with their boats, they see reserved. They don't actually can see what the dates are, and they turn around and they leave. And that's, I've heard, has happened several times. So is there any way that when they have the big letters reserved that actually they could see when it's going to be in? You know, some of the Canadians, you know, I mean, they speak English, but some of them, you know, when they say reserve, they come all the way up the river, and then they turn around and they're leaving because they can't read that smaller plate of the day. They just assume, you know, when you say, when it says reserve, they just okay. don't look any further. All right, I'll leave, I'll leave Jim a message on, on his phone. What, uh, what would be nice is to have uh, reserve uh, spelled out in Canadian as well, if there's room on the sign, if we could modify yeah, that. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know, I'm not, okay. I'm really not, I know there is a sign, I don't, I don't I've never seen the sign, yeah. so I don't know. Okay. But if the date, you know, so people can see it, yeah. so they don't, they, when you see it and they don't see the little yeah. part, they just assume that they can't park there and they turn around and they, okay. they go. All the docks are in. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Full today, too. I full. Happen. Yeah, Yeah, they are, yeah, yeah. So, I happened to notice when I was down there before the water was fully receded that the people had been down in there with four-wheel drive trucks and tore up all the pavement curving on over towards the uh, yeah there is the damage over there. over there yeah yeah I noticed that the other day is there any way we can put up a barrier for the high water season so that they can't get down down that far because they're going in there with their trucks they, hey we got clearance we're not going to get into the water and they go down. 
and on they, the, they tear they tear up that that island that was right in, there in Falls Park. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was really disgraceful when I went down there and saw that. I was <coughs> rather upset about it. That's a that's a nice area down there, and I hate to see it get destroyed. Plenty of boulders down there. They just have to skid them around in the middle of the road. Yeah, so. that could be blocked. It could yeah, be, could be blocked off, Randy. You know. uh, I mean, yeah. there isn't any reason after. You know. When the water recedes, you mean? Yeah. No, I mean as far as you know, in essence, closing the the facility at a, at some date, you know, whatever. You know, first of November or first of December until some date, you know, that it's closed. You know. Mm -hmm. The, you know, one of the things. Let me just tell you the down. The downside is, you know, keep in mind that that if you know, uh, you know, the police can't can't drive down in there when you when you do that. But you know, I mean, we can, it can be blocked off. Well, I mean, it, the, there must be some sort of solution that we can come up with because I hate to see the damage done. All right. Yeah, I tour. saw it. Yeah. There, there has been observations okay. of situations happening down there that's not supposed to happen down there and let's say the police force is uh, aware of things and are keeping a close eye on it so i guess i put that politically correct mm -hmm. okay I make the motion to adjourn okay second ziggy, ziggy second it all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed